IVC. Now here we go with my vinyl tag. I wasn't actually going to do this because I thought I couldn't find enough records that I hadn't already shown um, to justify doing this. But then I thought I went through the questions and I thought, oh, maybe I can actually make this interesting. Um, so here we go. One answer won't be a vinyl answer. But if you can't live with that, then tough. Um, now I've got my glasses on. Do I need them? Oh, actually, if I put it down there, if I put the questions down there on a piece of paper that I type, that I printed out, I can actually read them from this distance. So that's handy. I won't be able to see half the record for these, but who cares? Right, so here we go. 20 questions. How many records do you own? Right, so I reckon, I don't know for sure. I really haven't got a clue. I think, probably, probably about 11 to 1200 albums. There's about 350 12 inch singles. There's about five or 600 seven inch singles. Small collection of 10 inches, about 15 or so. Um, looking over there, probably about, oh, I don't know, I'm using that. Probably about 200 original tapes, maybe more than that. Maybe 250, I don't know. And approximately, now I was trying to top this up the other day, and I haven't got a clue. With a mix of CD singles and all kinds of stuff, probably, probably about three and a half to four thousand CDs. Probably. Maybe less, maybe more, but it's somewhere around there. I, they're all in big plastic boxes, so I've got no chance of counting them. I've done, I can do a rough estimate, but who knows. So there's my music collection. What kind of record player do you have? I've got an old Garrard record player. It does me at the moment. It's not the greatest in the world. Um, but it plays records at the right speed. And they sound alright on it. Probably will upgrade it relatively soon. I hope to get something quite decent. But we'll see. How old were you when you started collecting records? I was 14. Yeah. The day I bought my first two albums was the day I started collecting records. Yeah, I'd been had access to other music before that, but it wasn't mine and it wasn't I didn't I didn't class it as mine and I didn't start collecting records until then. What is the oldest record you own? Right. So we can actually start showing something now we got off the introductory questions. Right. I think this is the oldest record I own. This was my grandfather's record, and it's Django by Django Reinhardt. Um, this is, as far as I can gather, this is an original pressing on Oriole, uh, released in 1957. I'm pretty sure it's the oldest record I've got, because I don't have much jazz, I don't have really, really old stuff. I can't even get it. I've got to change the sleeve for this, this because it's just watched in there. Um, I have played it. It does sound good, really good. Um, I think it's got one skip on one side, and I'm going to do my best to try and fix it. But it, it's really good. Really enjoyed listening to this. So there we go. My oldest record. Right. What is the first record you ever got? Probably the first record I ever got is this one. Right, this is a story record um, from 19... Oh dear, I've shot my glasses, I think. Oh yeah, there it is, I can just about read that. 1976. And this is Doctor Who and the Pescatons. I think, I presume that's how you pronounce it. Um, with voices by Tom Baker, who was the best Doctor. Yeah, it's a Doctor Who record, by the way. If you didn't realise. And Elizabeth Sladen, the gorgeous Liz Sladen, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago now sadly missed but this is a great story um, and I remember playing
playing it when I was a kid. And I might... Um, this must have been given. To, this must have been got for me. Because nobody else in my family was a Doctor Who fan. So, yeah, this is probably... This will be the earliest one. On the Argo label. There we go. Argo. No idea. So there we go. Right. First record you got with your own money. I actually bought two. On the at the same time, um, I should have bought records way earlier, like in the early eighties, probably nineteen eighty, nineteen eighty one, maybe even seventy nine. But my mum, for for some obscure reason, wouldn't let me buy seven inch singles. She said they were a waste of money. <sighs> Unbelievable. She had some funny ideas. Anyway, but um, so she wouldn't. She would only let me buy albums. Well, I don't know. I guess I wasn't ready to buy albums. I didn't know enough artists. I didn't know. I did, didn't know anything. I just liked the few odd tune that I heard on the radio. Silly woman. Anyway, so what did I buy? The first records I bought, two greatest hits of two of my favourite bands at the time. So I got, and I've shown these before on some other, I don't know, competition or something. But they were Complete Madness track after track of, of excellence of of just pure pop I mean just amazing stuff and the height of bad manners bust a fatty bust a blood vessel um, started off as a ska band part of the two tone sort of affiliated with the two tone thing um, and turned into a great pop band brilliant Right, next one. What's your favourite coloured vinyl? I don't go massively on coloured vinyl. It really doesn't bother me. Um, to me, it always... When I've got something spinning on my turntable, it just looks odd if it isn't black. Um, but saying that, I have got some coloured vinyl. I don't go out of my way to get it, but I had to get this one on coloured vinyl because it was only produced on coloured vinyl. Is this one. Um, Dope Throne. Pochilaga. I've shown this before as well, but I don't think anybody saw it. Um, the greatest DIY sludge, doom, whatever you want to call it, metal band. Nobody seems to know this lot, and they are just a phenomenal band. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I urge any metalhead to go and go and have a listen to this. On, on um, They're on Bandcamp, I think. Uh, I think that's just about the only way you can actually... Hear them. I don't think they're on anything else. They might be on YouTube. Um, so I better show the vinyl. It's on blood red with black swirls. I think it's really pretty. It's really quite understated, really. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, as I said, I don't go much on vinyl. I think I've got a green vinyl, a couple of green vinyl things, some white vinyl stuff. But I'm just I'm just happy with the old black vinyl, to be honest. Right, next question. What is a discount album you own? Well, to be honest, all of them. Well, just about all of them. Apart, well, obviously Dope Throwing I bought brand new because it's the third pressing and I've been after it for ages and the second and first pressings were way out of my price range. Um, but I, I, I go shop, record shopping in, in charity stores, boot sales. See, for me, part of the thrill of getting these records, I don't buy any old tap. Um, unlike some of the guys on that vinyl documentary by, by um, what's his name, Zweig. I can't remember his first name. I mean, they just hoard records and just... I can't see any reason for buying most of the stuff they do buy. Or did buy. Um, but most of this lot have been cheap. They've either been in sales when I was younger or been in charity shops, boot sales, as I said. Anywhere I can find a record for a quid that I think is a good buy. Superb. And I, you know, you buy, you turn up some some sterling stuff like Stephen Stills and Manassas, second album for a quid, or all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so there we go. Right, record.
record by a female artist. Well, I'm going to go for something I haven't shown, which is good. And it's this one. And I don't think she gets shown enough, anywhere near enough on the VC. Um, this is Patti Smith. This is her debut, Horses. This is an outstanding record. An absolutely outstanding record. And it was a real influence on New Wave and Punk. Um, she was a just... This is just so off the wall, really. It's just an amazing, it's a fantastic version of Gloria. And you've got the song Birdland and Land and, oh, it just goes on and on and on. It's just absolutely magnificent. And if you haven't heard Patti Smith, then I urge you, I really do, go and listen to some. Just go and listen to her, because she is fantastic. Right, what's next? Oh, a record by your favourite band. Um, my favourite band, consistently over the last... Oh my God, it's 30 years. Oh my God, since this came out. Um, consistently has been Primal Screen. I followed their career, ins and outs. Don't think I've got the last album yet. Or maybe the last two, actually. But anyway... I've consistently followed them, listened to them all the time, go back. I mean, a lot of you know one of my favourite all-time albums is Screamadelica. Um, but this was their debut album on the um, Elevation label, which was a label put together by WEA specifically for um, creation to put some try and reach the mainstream. But this is gorgeous. Middle 60s, sort of aftermath influenced, um, jangle, jangle, guitar pop. And I had a shirt just like that, Lisa. I think you were going on about, oh yeah it was, it was Lisa, going on about um, Blues Magoo's album cover where the guy had the, the polka dot shirt. Well there's another one. And I had one too. <laughs> anyway, so I just love this record. Just brilliant. Here we go. Right. Impulse buy. Well, most of my most of my records are impulse buys. Um, not all of them, actually. Probably probably 40, 50, 50% 50 of them are. Because I just see them and go, ooh, ooh, that looks interesting. But the, probably the greatest impulse buy I ever, ever had was when I picked this up. This is Red Cross Neurotica. I got this for 99p in HMV Oxford Street, the new one which shut, which is now shut, well one of them shut, but the new HMV shop in the middle of Oxford Street. Um, and this was in the sale section. And I was flicking through and never heard of them before. I think it was about 1988, 89 I did this, got this. Um, and I thought, now that looks like it could be an interesting record. Just going by the, the guys in the band. And the cover. I love the cover of this. So I thought, right. And it's on the, on the big time label. So I've plunked my pound down. I think it might have even been a note by then. And off I went home. And it, well, it is... Probably the greatest impulse buy I have ever had. Just had to, just a fantastic record. Absolutely fantastic. And if you haven't seen um, Vinyl Richie's Red Cross video, then I go and watch that because it is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. In fact, go and watch all of Vinyl Richie's videos because he is hilarious at times. And I love watching his videos. There we go. Right, next one. A gift. Right, so I'm going to put this one. I was so pleased I got this. Um, nominally, this was a gift from my daughter um, for Christmas last year. I did go and buy it myself, but um, she wanted to buy me, get me something. So I got this. So there we go. Kid A. Love it. My second favourite album of all time. I don't know, I kind of flip-flops with Stone Roses and um, this. Sometimes it's 
this matches it but never quite overtakes it but oh right most played record i reckon the most played record has got to be this one electric um by the cult um i mean i must have played it consistently solidly for at least four or five years before i um when i got it and i keep bunging it on i got it on cd when i was in japan so it kept getting played um this has just got to be it just brilliant right a rarity a rarity i found this one quite hard I, what i've gone for is something i know is pretty expensive and i'm guessing by the higher the price the rarer the record i mean most of my records probably aren't worth that much not not massive amounts. I mean, you know, some of them, you know, 10 quid each or 20 to 30 quid. But this one is quite rare. This is uh, Mother Love Bones album, Apple, uh, original pressing from 1989. And I've talked about this before. Got one of my favourite songs of all time on it, Crown of Thorns, which I just, it makes me break down and cry. It really does. It brings tears to my eyes, that song, because it's so good. And I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to say too much, but Andrew Wood sadly missed. Right. Okay. Rainy Day Record. I I found found this hard, to be honest. Because if it's raining outside, I just put I just lose myself in whatever I'm listening to, so it could be upbeat, downbeat, I don't know, but if he'd asked Sunday morning record, then that would have been different, but it's not Sunday morning record, it's rainy day record, and then I remembered there's one band who I absolutely love, I do tend to listen to them more in the winter rather than the summer for some reason, I don't know why, so I chose this one, the Smiths, Me is Murder, so for me this is my, f the best, I know probably people will go, eh? But I think this is their best album. I absolutely love every song on this. And I think it's better than Queen is Dead because the humour on this is, is much more subtle. It's not quite as forced as... I find some of Queen is Dead, Queen is Dead quite forced. Um, but things like the Headmaster Ritual and um, Barbarism Begins at Home and What She Said and and, some, and that joke isn't funny anymore. Is one of my favourite Smith songs. It's just amazing. And this is a UK pressing without How Soon Is Now on it. Which I think the Americans do have on there. Um, so yeah. I tend to listen to the Smiths more in winter when it's cold and grey and wet. So there we go. My rainy day record. Um, feel Good album. Sticky Fingers. I put this on. And even though there are some slow songs. It's not a. It's not. An absolute. Rocking song all the way through. It just makes me feel good. I mean Brown Sugar. Sway. Wild Horses. Can't you hear me knocking. You gotta move. Bitch. I got the blues. Sister Morphine. Dead Flowers and Moonlight Mile. I just, it makes me feel happy listening to that record. Great picture there. Of, it's, this is an 80s reissue. It's a nice price sticker on it. Which I never really... I never... I was too scared to take that off. Um, so it doesn't have the zip. But then apparently the zip wrecks all everything else that's around. So probably just as well. There we go. A nostalgic record something over there that I've got a nostalgic record oh have I done oh I've missed one out haven't I have I oh I've missed one out right before I before I do um nostalgic record I'm going to do my most precious possession now it is on a record 
My most precious possession is this. My Kate Bush box set. Had to be. Even though it only goes up to 1990, so it doesn't have red shoes and any of the... So there's no red shoes, there's no um, aerial, there's no, you know, the rest of it. This is my most precious possession. And if I had to leave the house and never come back, this is what I'd take with me. Kate Bush means more to me than probably any other artist. Um, I didn't choose her as my record by a female artist because I wanted to show Paddy, but Kate just means more to me than any other artist. I just love her music. Absolutely amazing. So this is my most precious possession, which has got a lovely little book. There we go. And there are all the CDs with um, two CDs of um, rarities and B-sides and extra tracks. I actually bought this, I got this in Bangkok on a visit. I was over there when I was living in Japan, we went on holiday in Bangkok and I ended up buying, buying it there. Um, probably the most expensive thing I ever bought, but it's a UK edition. All the way over to Bangkok and I brought it back again. So there we go. Right. Oh, I don't know why I missed that one out. Probably because I was looking through the records and I wasn't concentrating on that that thing. Right. Nostalgic record. I thought long and hard about this one, but I reckon it's got to be this one. It's just got to be. This brings back so many memories from the day I bought it. When me, it was a record that me and my mum and my dad actually listened to together. Um, I remember bouncing around in the dining room where we had used to have the stereo and uh, just just loving it. And um, reminds me of growing up when I thought they were the greatest band in the world. And I still listen to this all the time. I still bung it on. Um, just because it takes me back. And, and every, song's a, every song's a winner on it. Every song's a winner on it. Yeah, no wonder it sold so many copies, to be honest. There we go. Oh, it got, oh yeah, it's got printed in a sleeve. I forgot about that. It's got the discography up to that point which I got everything except Flash got to remedy that I've got to get the rest of because there's three there's three Queen albums I don't know I think it's three now because I got I got one of them that I was missing Flash Kind of Magic and Innuendo and I'm torn with whether to get innuendo on vinyl or CD because apparently it's all edits on on vinyl. Oh, I'll probably have to get it just to complete, but I really want to get that. Anyway, there we go. Nostalgia. Right. Record store day purchase. I don't do record store day. I just don't do it. I don't get it. No, I do get it. I understand it gets people in to buy it to record shops. But I have never ever seen anything I've ever wanted on Record Store Day because it's all reissues as far as I can see. I can't see anybody releasing brand new music and I'd rather buy, if I'm going to pay 30 quid for, for an album or 15 quid for a 7 inch, I want some new music, not something I've already got. I don't know. Just... In its current format, I don't get it. Just don't get it. But there we go, record store day. And a recent purchase, where I'm actually gonna, I've just, hang on. Right, um, today I'm gonna show something I probably won't show in another video because, um, um, 
I don't tend to show tapes and CDs that I buy, but I do buy, still buy quite a lot of them. And I thought I'd just show that. Elkie Brooks, um, Pearls. I was astounded by this. I picked this up today for 50p. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty Radio 2, pretty middle of the road, but the vocals are really good on it. And I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I don't know, I guess it took me back to listening to the radio in on long car journeys, I guess. It's just that kind of vibe to it. Back when I was um, well, in the late 70s, early 80s. And we used to have Radio 2. My parents only ever used to listen to Radio 2 in the car. They wouldn't put on Radio 1 because it was rubbish, apparently. Anyway, so there we go. Okay, there we go. My vinyl tag. I should really call it my music tag because they're... Um... Oh dear, stitching's coming through. Right. <coughs> because um, there were a couple of non-vinyl things, but mainly vinyl. So there we go. And I showed some things that I've never shown before, which is cool. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye, BC.